My name's Hugh Possingham. I'm a professor of ecology and mathematics at the University of Queensland. During this course, you've heard a lot about the impact of climate change. Now we're going to drill down a bit deeper to try and understand how we can predict the impact of climate change and also manage climate change. In the first case, we'll look at observations. As you all know, the world's been getting warmer and as we can see, some places have been warming faster than others. These are the change in environmental conditions we have and they're already impacting marine ecosystems. There's several ways we can understand this impact. The first one is to look at particular extreme conditions over long periods of time. For example, we have long periods of warming uh, during El Nino and cooler periods during La Nina in different parts of the world. These warmer periods can then cause impacts like coral bleaching that are telling us something about what it would be like if it's warmer in the future. Then there's also just small periods of warming, just like particularly warm years or particular months that are warmer. And in this case, we often find uh, subtropical or tropical species move into temperate regions where they weren't normally for a short period of time. And this also enables us to predict the future. And finally, other than looking at changes through time, we can look at particular places in the ocean that are warmer. And we've created some of those places, for example, in the outfalls from nuclear power plants. These places can be proxies for us understanding a world that is a lot warmer. We can study the ecosystems there. And for example, in places like Florida, we find that the manatees stay further north a lot longer because they congregate around these warmer waters around power plants. And it's not just temperature that's going to change in the future. We also know that CO2 levels will increase a lot. How can we get a prediction about this from places in the ocean? Well, unexpectedly, we've found CO2 seeps in the ocean in areas where there are coral reefs, and in this case of Papua New Guinea. On the far left, we look at the coral community uh, far away from the coral seep, unaffected by the CO2 levels. In the middle, we have a slide that's closer to the, the seep, which has higher concentrations of CO2 and hence higher acidity, and we find a, a much lower diversity of corals, much more robust corals, stress-tolerant corals. And then on the far right, right at the coral seep, you find there's virtually no corals whatsoever. So this is potentially the impact of elevated CO2 on corals. Not just looking at particular places in space, we can actually go back much further in geological time, and we can use the fossil records to uncover the impact of climate change on the environment over thousands of years. And we can do that by digging through these fossils. Some individual corals have been around for a long time, for example, this huge parietes. And if we core into that, we can get a signature of the past climate over decades and maybe hundreds of years, and then try and relate that to the fossil records and look for correlations between the climate and species and communities. And finally, other than looking at the fossil record and fossils and looking at maybe a thousand to a couple of thousand years of temperature and community change, we can just lose the last 50 years when the Earth has warmed up between half a degree and a degree and look at the impact of that recent warming on ecosystems and species. In this case, we already have data showing that the coral communities in Japan have been moving north towards the poles as a response to recent climate change. And then uh, some communities, in this case diatoms, it's not that the species necessarily all move, however seasonal events such as, as diatom blooming uh, have been occurring much earlier because the sea is warmer. And finally, we can look at the impact of climate change on sea level rise because sea level rise has occurred in some places uh, for a range of factors. And with sea level rise, we can see that some communities, particularly the mangroves, have actually already started moving inland uh, away from the ocean.